Welcome to Etopedia World and today we're going to discuss about fertilization in plants. Let's define what is fertilization. When a pollen grain lands on the surface of a stigma, it produces a tube. The increase of the tip of the tube contains the male cells of the flowers. These tubes grow down the style to reach the ovals in the ovary. Inside each oval is an egg cell. Fertilization in flowering plants was discovered by Strauss Berger in 1884. So how fertilization in plant takes place? As you can see in the image, first, the pollen grain germinates after the carpel is pollinated. From the germinated pollen grain, a pollen tube emerges and grows. It travels and grows and moves toward the ovary by creating a path through the female tissue. And we have two types of nucleus. The first one, we have the vegetative tube, and the second one, we have generative nuclei of the pollen grain pass into the pollen tube. Stigma secretes a sugary substance that stimulates the growth of the pollen tube. The pollen contains the vegetative and the generative nucleus and the cell ruptures the stigma and passes through the style. The pollen grains attaches itself to the stigma of the female reproductive structure the pollen tube grows and enters the ovule, making a tiny pore called micropyle. The pollen tube does not reach the ovary in a straight line. The pollen tube grows near the style and curls to the bottom of the ovary and then near the receptacle. The pollen tube then breaks into the ovule through the micropyle and then the micropyle bursts into the embryo sac. In the embryo sac, on the male nucleus fuses with the nucleus of the egg and forms a diploic cycle, and this process is known as true fertilization or syncomy. The other male germate or nucleus enters further into the embryo sac and it fuses with secondary nucleus. This gives rise to a triploid nucleus called the primary endosperm nucleus. This process of nuclear fusion where there is formation of primary endosperm nucleus is called triple fusion. After the process of fertilization, the ovary swells up and develops into a fruit and in case of fruits with multiple seeds, multiple pollen grains are necessarily to fertilize with each of all. The pollen tube growth is controlled vegetative cytoplasm to digest the female tissue. The pollen tube produces hydrolytic enzymes as the tube moves down towards the stigma and style. The tissue digested by the hydrolytic enzymes acts as a nutrient source of the pollen tube. So that is the process of fertilization in a plant takes place. As you can see in the previous slide, you see the spelling for the fertilization S is Z. Actually, there is no issue about the spelling in terms of fertilization with S or fertilization in Z. That two word is the same. We also have types of fertilization. First, we have the porogamy. It is the most common style of fertilization seen in angiosperm plants. In porogamy, the entry of the pollen tube into the oval takes place through the micropyle. Second, we have the calasogamy. In calasogamy, the pollen tube enters throughout the calaza and it can be seen in casuarina plants. Third one, we have the mesogamy. 
Mesogamy is seen in cucurbita plants. Here, the pollen tube enters through the integuments of the oval. These are the three types of fertilization. We have first, porogamy, second, kalazogamy, and the third one, we have the mesogamy. Also, we have double fertilization. Double fertilization is a complex mechanism of fertilization in flowering plants or angiosperm. Double fertilization is going of a female gemotopide with two male gametes and one sperm nucleus fertilizes the egg cell and the other sperm combines with the two polar nuclei of the megagametopate and the haploid sperm and haploid egg combine to form the diploid cycle. The other sperm nucleus fused with the other two haploid polar nuclei of the megagametomate to form a tripolate nucleus. This develops into an endosperm and it is called the primary endosperm nucleus. This entire phenomenon of fertilization that involves the fusion of the egg and on one male gamete and the fusion of the other male gamete with the secondary or the polar nuclei is called double fertilization. As you can see in the image, this is the double fertilization in plant. The pollen grain adheres to the stigma, which contains two cells, generative and the tube cell. The pollen tube cells grows into the style. The generative cells travels inside the pollen tube and it divides to form two sperm. The pollen tube penetrates an opening in the oval called micropate. And in embryo sac, one of the sperm fertilize the egg to form the diploid cycle, and the other sperm fertilize two polar nuclei to form the triploid endosperm and which become a food source for the growing embryo. Next, we have the gynosperm fertilization. In this process, the gymotopate stage is short-lived. The male germate are micropotopate and develop from microspores producing sperm cells. Megagametopates are the female gametes develop from the megaspore and are present in the oval. The female gematopate produce multiple archegonia. Pollen grains are transferred between plants from pollen cone to the oval through pollinators like wind or insects. Pollen grains enter into oval through micropyle. The pollen grains mature inside a female gematopite and produce sperm cells. Two modes of fertilization is seen in gymnosperm. In plants like cycads and ginkgo, Sperms are motile and they swim directly into the egg inside the oval. In plants like conifers and gentopites, the sperms have no flagel and they are passed on the egg through the pollen tube. After fertilization, the resulting embryo develops in the female gentopite and the oval forms into a seed and a seed coat. This will become our new sporpite, which consists of two embryonic leaves. Next, we have the angiosperm fertilization. In this process, the female reproductive organ is the pistil and is present in the middle of the flower. The male gemetopite is pollen grains as in gymnosperm. Pollinators like insects, other animals, help in fertilization of flowering plants. Also, double fertilization takes place in angiosperm. The pollen tube penetrating into the oval releases two sperm cells and one sperm cell fuses with the egg to form a diploid cycle. The other sperm cells fuses 
two polar nuclei to form a triploid nucleus. The triploid nucleus forms the endosperm and nutrishes the developing embryo. The ovary containing the ovus develops into a fruit after fertilization. Post fertilization changes in flowers. After the process of fertilization, the embryo undergoes a number of mitotic divisions to form multicellular embryo. The endosperm nucleus also goes through a series of divisions to form a mass of endosperm cells. These endosperm cells provide nutrition to the developing embryo. After fertilization, the following changes are observed in a flower. First, there is a formation of diploid zygote and it develops into an embryo which forms the future plant. Second, the endosperm cells serve as a source of nutrition for the developing embryo. The oval becomes the seed, the ovary becomes the fruit, and in most of the plant, the antipodals and cygnogids disintegrate before, during, or immediately after fertilization. The outer and inner integerments of the oval becomes the testa or the seed coat of the seed. Petals and sepals fall off. Embryo formation the fertilized zygote undergoes a regular sequence of divisions to form the embryo. The oospore divides to form a suspensor or basal cell and a terminal embryo cell. The basal is present towards the micropyle and terminal cells towards the calaza. The basal cells divide repeatedly or repeatedly to produce a row of four to eight cells. These cells constitute the suspensor. The preembryo is formed as the terminal cell divides in various planets or planes to form a cluster of cells and the suspensor pushes the or the proembryo into the endosperm to enable the developing embryo obtain nourishment. The embryo and the endosperm mature the integument of the oval becomes hard to form the seed coat which protects the seed. And as you can see in the image, this is the process for embryo formation. So thank you for listening to Pedia World.